Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, lately I've been doing a lot of work with my channel trying to present good educational material and trying to avoid a lot of that debunking community mocking of people that are, shall we say, a little less smart than we are. This is not going to be one of those videos. Today we're going to have a look at Quantum Eraser and subject him to the ridicule that he so richly deserves. Quantum Eraser is one of these flat earthers that is part of a talk show that mocks and mutes people from the globe earth, or shall I say reality. And one of their favorite tricks is to misquote and cherry pick scientific papers to give them meanings other than what is actually intended in the paper. I've already exposed this a few times. But today we're going to have a look at him trying to explain the Al Biruni method of determining the radius of the earth. So let's cue up the music and let the dumpster fire begin. But what about uh, that Al Biruni argument? Is this uh, new just to me? Or because nobody commented on it. No, this has been around for a long time. This is, see, they didn't get the radius from Eratosthenes. They have no primary source document, and their secondary source documentation is belly laughingly weak. The actual radius came from Al Biruni. Well, QE, let me go ahead and give you a basic lesson in geometry from maybe the sixth grade. Al Biruni calculated the radius of the Earth directly. Eratosthenes calculated the circumference of the Earth. If you have either of those values, the circumference or the radius, you have the radius, the diameter, and the area of a circle. It's just applying the right formula to it. You do know the formulas, right? So basically, your assertion is ridiculous, and I laugh at you. Ha 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 ha. Wow. So unorthodox, what do you think about that? About Al Biruni and his yeah. methods? I think it's great. <laughs> smart guy. Though, I mean, it's a it's a logical deduction. Where's the where's the problem with the logic? Where's the problem? You want me to repeat it? If he was if he was taking the angle from an apparent, i.e., refracted horizon, how can you get a geometric radius from that? Well, actually, quantum eraser. That's pretty simple. First of all. The refraction is known. Second of all, you can correct for it. So even with a refracted horizon, if you are up at a mountain, you can get the radius of the Earth within about three degrees. And quite frankly, that's good enough for 1000 AD. Well, it, it wouldn't be perfect. It would be within an error margin. And you would do it <laughs> multiple days under, under different conditions. Okay, let's but take a look we, at the black we've swan. we confirmed his method. Let's we take a look at the black swan. Hold on one second. They have the same, same oh. result. Hold on one second. Let's take a look at the black swan. Let me get over there. I mean, you got to admit, it is a little odd that his calculation completely perfectly matches up with... Um, with your begging the question other. fallacy story. Yeah, that's, re that's really coincidental. Okay. Well, no, that's not true, QE. The radius as determined by Eratosthenes and the radius as determined by the method Al Biruni are within just a percentage or two of each other. They agree, even though they were found by different methods. That is very strong evidence that that's the correct radius. So in this photograph right here, if Al Biruni was right here and he calculated this horizon right here, he would estimate that this, let's make it conservative. The horizon is 9.41 miles, at least. We could say 10 miles. It's actually much further than that. But that's just, let's, we'll just use 10 miles. Al Biruni, the radius that he would calculate it of the Earth, you know what it would be? About 4,000 miles. 264,000 miles! I find this actually humorous, and the other guy is not buying it, as you'll see shortly. But Quantum Eraser is saying that because the horizon in this black swan photograph is so far out, Al Biruni would calculate the radius of the Earth to be a quarter of a million miles. I'd really like to see your math on that for a couple of reasons. First of all, the distance to the horizon 
is not part of the Al Biruni formula. Not at all. It's the dip to the horizon. And second of all, Al Biruni requires that you measure that dip to the horizon from a height, like a mountain, not from the shoreline. You can't measure a dip to the horizon from sea level. You don't know what the Al Biruni formula is, do you? That's the distance to the moon. Turn out the lights, party's over. Thank you. So, so how do you explain Al Biruni's method matching Aristosthenes? How doesn't, do you explain the two numbers matching? Yeah. Hold on. It doesn't. Maybe he needs me to tell him off. Did you not just listen to a word that was just spoken to you? It, it doesn't match a globe model. You don't have a geometric yeah. horizon. Uh, sorry, did you not just listen to what was... Now that squeaky voice that you just heard was Nathan Oakley, who is saying that the method of Al Biruni and the method of Eratosthenes did not come to the same radius of the Earth. Well, let's have a look. This is Eratosthenes' circumference of the Earth which is 46,620 kilometers, an error of about 16%. Al Biruni came up to within 200 miles of 24,902 miles and less than a 1% error. Now, because the circumference is the same for both, the radius of that circumference is the same. So they do agree with each other quite well. So even though it's easy to confirm that they both match, why didn't Oakley do that? Why is he just asserting that the circumferences came up different? Because that's his job. He has to promote the flat earth, even though Oakley himself knows the earth is round. How do I know that? Because we've caught him in private messages telling people not to make certain arguments because those arguments prove the spherical earth. You know, one thing that I've always wanted to do is get a GoFundMe together and we'll do a polygraph test on Nathan Oakley and ask him if he believes the Earth is a globe. We'll see what happens if he says yes. We'll see what happens if he says no. See which one is the truthful answer. I can show you the calculation right now. What was your reply about the moon and the distance to it? Did you say that's half the distance to the moon? That's the distance to the moon, 260,000 miles, what he just stated. I think he's getting the math up. So based on Al Biruni's method, that's how far the horizon in the Black Swan is. You know, these guys can't even keep their own story straight. First, Quantum Eraser says, according to Al Biruni, from the shoreline, the radius of the Earth would be 260,000 miles. Then Nathan comes out and says, well, it's 260,000 miles to the horizon, according to Al Biruni. They have no idea what they're talking about. They can't even keep their own stories straight. So who, who 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 measured the angle? I'd like to see your calculation. Oh I don't think my goodness correct. gracious, boy! It's it's just never mind. Let's continue. It's too and what's happened. That's what's happening here. It doesn't really appreciate what's happened. He's told us that's absurd. That's a massive size. That's using Al Biruni's method. But Al Biruni's method's good. My God. Indeed, Al Biruni's method is good. You're just not using it correctly. Now, he asked you specifically to see who measured that angle, and he wants to know what the angle is, and then he wants you to actually do the math for him. You're not going to do that, though, are you? A, because you can't, and B, because if you did do it properly, it wouldn't come up with the nonsense that you're trying to promote now. I think you messed up the calculation. I'd, have to, I'd like to see it. I really? Have to anyway. How, I really? Have to have really? You are really? Really, really, when you actually use that method to work out how far the geometric horizon would be, suddenly gets described by the people who do understand this argument as not being geometric anymore. Except, of course, Al Biruni doesn't calculate the distance to the horizon. It calculates the radius of the Earth based on the dip to the horizon from a mountain. But you don't know that, do you? Now, he's asking you to present your work. Nathan, quantum, put your math up. And by the way, I actually did some recent measurements of the radius of the Earth based on the dip to the horizon. And specifically, we looked at 45,000 feet above the surface and a dip to the horizon of 3.75 degrees. It comes up to within about 7% 
of the actual radius of the Earth. It's really quite accurate. I, we haven't got white swans, geometric horizons, refracted suddenly. That's because it doesn't match the Alberuni method, you bonehead. Not because it's really good, because it gives you, what was it you put it as? Half the distance to the moon for the horizon. Yeah, that seems wildly inaccurate, given that you think it's 39.59. Yeah? Hello? Is the penny dropped yet? Maybe another stony silence. Well, I do have to admit, your overwhelming stupidity and misunderstanding of this problem does leave me at a loss for words. But I'll find some. Yeah, I think the calculation is messed up. Let's I'm just go back to it. Let's gives, just go back. Hold, hold on. Before we get to the calculation. You know, I'll tell you something. If 2 plus 2 equals 4 and you add 2 plus 2 and come up with 6, I don't think it's the problem with the equation. I think it's your problem doing the math. The calculation's the one that you're defending. It's Al Peruni's. You think that's messed up, do you? Yeah, we'd agree. Welcome to Flat Earth. Has the penny still not dropped? I don't mind doing this six more times. It's fun for the audience. How stupid you are. I think it's pretty fun for my audience, too. You tried to you tried to take his method and come up with a number, and you failed miserably because that, that is woefully, that is like five to ten orders of magnitude off from, from what you'd expect. Uh, show, show me the calculation. Yeah, yeah. You'd expect yeah, based on a model. Yeah, right, unorthodox. It's orders of magnitude wrong. You know, kids, let me give you a little clue here. If the formula is correct, and it is, and you get an answer that is five to ten orders of magnitude wrong, you did something wrong. Then it would be orders of magnitude wrong. That's right. Welcome to Flat Earth. Anybody notice that this seems to be their new buzzword? They make some completely moronic statement and leap of logic and then shout, Welcome to Flat Earth. No, your calculation is incorrect. No, it's not incorrect. And let's okay. get before, hold on a second, before we get to the calculations. So Al Biruni's method was to look at what you guys call the apparent or refracted horizon. So how can he deduce a geometric radius from an apparent or refracted horizon? Well, you you do it over land, and you would do it from multiple locations. It doesn't matter. Multiple it, days. And you, you would get an average, and we know that from his, at, from his calculations that it matches Eratosthenes. It matches so Eratosthenes. All, all of a sudden, it matched Eratosthenes. It's not going to be perfect by any means. Right, right, right. But it's, but it's nonsensical at its base. Conceptually, it's non sequitur. Now, this is a classic tactic that they like to use. They say, if you can't measure something perfectly, you can't measure it. When we look at the horizontal dip in the method al Biruni, we are indeed looking at a refracted horizon or an apparent horizon which is slightly different than the geometric horizon. There's a couple of things that we can do to fix that. First of all, the higher you are, the less the difference between the refracted and the geometric horizon. So you're reducing your error by going up high, which is why Al Biruni measured his horizontal dip from an 884 meter high mountain. Now you can't do this from the seashore. It wasn't intended to be measured from the seashore. You have to be up high. Second of all, refraction is a known quantity. We have an average refraction, and that's 7 over 6R, and we can calculate that and account for that. Now, I recently did a video on the method Al Biruni and calculating the radius of the Earth, and I calculated it both using the geometric horizon and the refracted apparent horizon. And the difference between the two was about 3%. I don't care what refraction is. You can't use an apparent or refracted horizon to deduce geometric radius. Well, actually, you can, and I did. Well, guys, I think that's enough fun for right now. You know, I like the little disclaimer down here at the bottom of the screen. Flat Earth. The Flat Earth model is an archaic conception of the Earth's shape. I think that pretty much says it all. Just recapping our episode today, Quantum Eraser and Nathan Oakley were repeatedly asked to show their math. They were unable to do so. They were questioned as to why they were talking about the distance to the horizon in the method Al Biruni, because the distance to the horizon 
has nothing to do with the method al-Biruni. And finally, we summed up with talking about the method al-Biruni and Pythagoras. They have nothing to do with each other. They use two completely different approaches to calculating things, and they don't even look at the same thing. Pythagorean is used in the curve calculator to find out the amount of a building that's hidden over the curve of the Earth. Al-Biruni uses the law of cosines. And of course, Eratosthenes looked at the measurement of a shadow over 500 miles to calculate a rough estimate of the circumference of the Earth. And they got it right. Hey, Nathan, quantum. I've had a standing offer to talk to you about any of this on a neutral platform. I've suggested Jose J.G. Gonzalez. But you're too much of cowards to leave your mute button, your volume control, and your little peanut gallery. As we saw in this episode, your entire modus operandi seems to be talking over your guests while you turn their volume down and turn yours up. I'm sure you're using your mute button as well, but you didn't answer a single one of his questions when he asked you to show your work. And quite frankly, you're a joke. So if you ever want to try me, I'm right here. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by. Swing down and hit that little like and subscribe. If you find yourself on any of these Flurf channels, put out a little notice that Bob wants a piece of Nathan Oakley and Quantum Eraser. Come get me. Take care, guys.